In this lesson, we are learning how to set up an audio interface in Cubase and get our inputs and outputs all mapped correctly. If this lesson helps you out, be sure to give it a like and drop any other tutorials you'd like to see in the comments below. Also, if you're interested, be sure to check out the description for full recording, mixing, and mastering courses. So let's set up our interface. In order to get audio into our computer when we're recording, and then out of our computer to hear it via headphones or speakers, we're going to need to use an audio interface. Now, if you're only using virtual instruments and samples to create your music, then you actually won't really need an audio interface to start out. You can use your headphones plugged straight into the headphone jack of your computer. But if you're wanting to use a microphone to record or plug an instrument in to record, then you're going to need an audio interface from the beginning to get that signal from the microphone or instrument and get that into the computer and the recording software. An interface will also allow you to output sound to studio monitors or speakers. There is a video in this course on recommended interfaces, so be sure to check that out if you need help picking one. So once you have an interface, you will need to make sure you have the right cable. Uh, mine connects with a Thunderbolt 3 cable. Most will connect with the USB or Thunderbolt of some kind. So once you have that correct cable, you can plug your interface into your computer. Then if you need to use a power cable to power your interface, you'll want to set that up as well. Smaller interfaces will actually normally use what's called bus power, which means they are powered straight from the computer on that one cable, which is pretty handy. However, a larger interface like my Apollo needs an external power supply. So once you have your interface plugged in and turned on, we need to download any drivers or extra software that is needed to help that interface work correctly. For my Apollo, I had to download the console application. Focusrite has Focusrite control. So basically, the moral of the story, read your interface manual and follow directions to download any software you need and install that to get your interface ready to go. Then once all that is ready, we will get the interface working with our recording software. So let's jump into Cubase and check this out. So here we have a Cubase project and to get my interface working correctly, I'm going to go to the studio menu and I'm going to go to studio setup. We can then go down to VST Audio System, and we can select our interface from this drop-down menu. If you're using headphones plugged straight into your computer, you can just use built-in audio. And if you're using an interface, that will show up down here. Mine is Universal Audio Thunderbolt, so I'm going to click that. It'll ask you if you want to switch the driver, and you can click Switch. So that's all we need to do here. We can see that our interface shows up right underneath this VST Audio System thing, and we can see all our inputs and outputs from our interface. So we can click OK. So once we have our interface selected, we can go to the studio menu again and go to audio connections. This is where we're going to set up our inputs and outputs. This is basically mapping the inputs and outputs of our interface, telling the software that they exist and can be used to input or output audio. So first let's do outputs. I'm going to go to outputs tab, and then we can just go to preset here and you can create your own preset or you could use one of the presets that will work with your interface. Now, depending on your interface, this menu will look a little bit differently here. I'm just going to pick stereo. And what that's going to do is give me a left and right output. We can see our audio device here, and we can select that if it's not selected, but it should come up automatically. And then it's going to map to the outputs of that device. So for me, this is my monitor left and right. And I know that's where I have my monitors plugged in. If we want to change this, we can click, and then a drop down menu of all your different outputs on your interface will show up. For me, I want monitor left and right, like it's saying right here. So that's it for outputs. For inputs, we'll go to the input tab, and then we can go to presets, and you can create your own presets. I've actually created one that works perfectly for my needs with my interface. But once again, there will be a drop down menu here of ones that will work with your interface. My interface has quite a few configurations that will work with it. And depending on your interface and what it can do, uh, those will be reflected in what is available in this drop down menu. So in general, what I do is I would select some mono buses. In this case, it gives you 34 because mine has 34 uh, mono buses available. And just for the example, we can see that this mono one bus, which is an audio path within our software, is linked to the input number one on my interface. Number two is linked to input number two. And we can click that and change that if we want to. Number three is number three, and so on and so forth. This is work great for recording a mono signal like a guitar or bass. If you're recording a stereo signal, you could select presets, and you could select stereo inputs. In my case, this will offer me 17 stereo inputs. If we select that, we can drop down here and see that this stereo bus has a left and right channel within it, and that is linked to input one and input two to my interface. Stereo two is linked to inputs three and four, and we could change those like we could with the mono ones. So what if you want to have mono inputs and stereo inputs at the same time, maybe to record a guitar and then a keyboard with left and right signal? Well, you could pick one of these stereo plus mono options. Maybe I want to have two stereo inputs and 30 mono inputs. We can see that stereo one then is linked to input one and two. Stereo two is three and four. So I could plug my keyboard into one and two and maybe another keyboard into three and four. And then I could use mono one for my guitar, which is input number five, and mono six for my bass, which is input number six. And all you have to do is plug in accordingly on your interface to what is set here. 
or you could rearrange these inputs if you wanted to. If you do want to create your own preset, say you want one stereo channel and then two mono channels, you could do this. You could click Add Bus. We can create one stereo, and I'll name it Stereo. And then we could click Add Bus again, and I could pick Mono. And we can make two of those. So here I have my stereo bus, and then one mono and a second mono. And what I can do then is, say I want mono one to be input one, I could select input one from here, and then mono two to be input two, and select input two. So maybe I'm just recording guitar, and I want to just use mono, then I could pick mono one. You could also record another instrument at the same time, maybe a microphone with that, and you could plug that one into mono two. So I'd have my guitar in input number one of my interface and my mic in input number two of my interface. Then if I wanted to record keyboards with the stereo input, left and right channels, I would go to input number one and input number two with my keyboard. This is how I'd set this up if I only had two inputs on my interface. So let's save this as a preset. We can go to this store button and I'll name that and then press okay. And every time we open a new session, we can come to this preset menu, click it, and that will be available here to select. So once we have our inputs and outputs selected, we can X out of this, and then we can go to our tracks and set the inputs for each of those tracks. So this is just finishing the process of mapping the input of our interface right to this audio track. So if I go to my audio track and I go to set my input, I can click that, and then I have the stereo left, right, which will be inputs one and two as we set, or I have my mono one, which is my input one, or my mono two, which is my input two. So for bass, it's just a mono signal, so I'll select mono one, and then for guitar, it's also a mono signal, so I'll just select mono two. So I just created a stereo keyboard track here, so I'm gonna click that, and then if I wanted to map that to the stereo input of one and two at the same time, we can go up to this input bus, and then we can click our stereo. And then we have that. So now this stereo over here correlates to this stereo here, which is our inputs one and two on our interface. All right, so once you have all that set up, you can test your interface to make sure that you can get audio in to record, and then also test that you can hear audio coming back out of your interface into your speakers or headphones. Make sure you have your speakers or headphones actually plugged in and turned on as well. That's definitely important. Once you can get audio in and audio out of your computer with your interface, then you should be ready to roll. If you have any more questions on setting up your interface, just let me know, and I'll see you in the next lesson.